Hi, I'm Matthew. This is part two of the inventory series. And today we're going to be going through how to get your item to become stored within an item slot, just like this, and how to stop it from interfering with other items. All right, let's get started. Now we've done in a create event. Just up here, we've got, uh, I have mine generated. So if you have decided you wanted to place your slots around um, and assign them your index value individually, do not do this part just here. Uh, though, if you are generating it, we need to initialize our index. We need to then assign the index, the global value, then we need to increment the index global value. So the next time the next one is made, the it will be assigned the next um, index value. All right. Now all our items have a item number, just like a list. So if we write down every item that we have in our game, the item number will be listed from one to however many items you have. And then we need to have if empty or an empty um, variable. And this just basically checks to see if the slot is empty or if it is not. All right, we'll move over to our next part, what is our left press. I do suggest if you want to pause the video to have a good look at it. Um, yeah. Now, this uh, basically checks up here if empty is true and we have an item that we are holding in our hand and so the best way to do that is to say if not zero because if zero if it is zero it will be an item there but if it's not zero then we have an item and then we'll be performing these events um, I will be going through with statements in a smaller s tutorial that specifically focuses on with statements. Um, now we're going to what, what we're going to do is we're going to say global item slot uh, index um, that is the index value of this slot. Every uh, slot on the screen will have an individual index value is equal to item. All right, and then we're going to say with item object if selected item is true and there is only one selected item, then it will be destroyed and then we will turn around and say to the global splay space uh, that global item equals zero. And that just clears everything up and then we will you know, continue on with the rest of the functions afterwards. Um, else, if we have an item in that slot and we want to take that item out, this will become true. But if we are holding an item in our hands, then global item is greater than zero. So it will not, this event will not be performed if we are holding another item. Um, though, if we're not holding another item, what it will do is it will turn around and say, all right, global override is true. What will override the item's usual deselect and select function? And then we'll type in global.item equals global.item slot index. Sounds like a lot, guys, but basically what we're doing is we're taking the number that we put into our array and we're assigning it to the global space where it will transfer that value to the created object that we create. Because all we need to do is create item object. And then item object will turn around and say, am I, um, what am I? And then it will assign itself an item and it will assign itself an item if it's overridden. If the override function's on, it will override standard function and then it will take on 
um, it will take on values that are assigned to the global space. Um, this is good to know because let's say we have, if we want to have other stats in this, what we will have to do is turn around and say, um, health, uh, gl we have to create a global health and then assign it the global health value or assign it, um, if we had an axe or a sword, um, we could as well have values that are stored within this weapon. Um, like if it's worn down, um, we can say, this, how, this is the number, how much it's worn down, I assign this value to the global space. Um, if you're not sure how to do that, we'll have to say global and dot and I'll say um, strength. Forgive it if it's not spelled right. I'm terrible at spelling. Uh, equals equals 20. Um, or if we, let's say, said we stored a strength value so we can have in this object, in the slot object, strength. And inside the slot object, we'll have strength. Strength. So that's what would happen. Um, remember, if you do it this way, you have to assign it up here. So I have to say strength equals global strength value. Um, so you're passing over variables through the global space. All right. I think I explained that well enough. Um, we need to then turn around, say item slot index equals zero. Uh, that's just clearing things up, always good to tidy up your code, um, and empty is true. So it's now empty. And then what we're going to do is we're going to call the update function. What is our why? This is very key. Every time that a press event's happened, it will call this update function. And then what it will do is it will do this. Um, now, you can add as much as you like. This is the all part of the code. But basically what happens here is um, if we have item one, if we have item two, if we have item three and four, they will have this. This will be what is um, inside. So if we have variables that, um, that are related to the certain item, we need to, of course, show them. So let's say we put down an object and uh, we wanted to have something happen to it, we can enter them within to this uh, switch case statement. Um, yeah, it, I will be going over a switch case statement um, in a smaller um, off to the side tutorial as well. Okay, uh, we'll jump into the very last and that's our draw event and this is as well uh, another switch case statement um, that isn't necessary, though sometimes people want to do certain visual changes and you can sign it into here. So, All right, guys, uh, that is part two. And thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the final part, part three, um, where we will be showing you the item object.